Hey guys, how's it going? Texpex here. Hope you're doing well. So many of you, like me, may have an iPad, and as you might know already, I use my iPad for many different things, such as photo editing, drawing, note taking, and much, much more. But what about video editing? There are many apps out there that allow you to edit video on an iPad, the main ones that people know of being iMovie or LumaFusion. But some people may want an app that offers a little more than iMovie, but that also retains a beginner friendly layout and no hefty price tag. And that's where Adobe Premiere Rush, well, rushes into the rescue. But how good realistically is it? And most importantly, what's the catch? Well, without further ado, let's find out. Okay, so as you would expect, Premiere Rush is obviously a relative of the big boy Premiere Pro, which is a video editor that's widely used by many professionals in the video industry. So, Premiere Rush surely then is a watered down version of Premiere Pro just for the iPad. Well, not exactly. Premiere Rush's main focus is mostly for people who make video on the go quite a lot, and people who maybe don't have access to a professional desktop or laptop all of the time, hence the reason for it being on an iPad and even on the iPhone. The layout, especially on the iPad's larger screen, is fairly straightforward to use, and it doesn't try to overcomplicate things, which is great for beginners. The star screen contains not much other than create new project, or any other previous projects that you've been working on, and once you do create a project, you are immediately brought to a screen that lets you import media. The categories are split into local media, as well as creative cloud or dropbox if you store anything in there, and local media is split into camera roll, moments, videos, photos, albums, audio, and general files from the files app, and again, it's very straightforward. In the top left you have some buttons for returning to the main menu, adding media if you need to add more, and an area to view all of the media that you've already imported into the timeline. Further down you also have other main tools, such as cut, duplicate, and delete. Unfortunately there are no keyboard shortcuts for say command B to cut or command D to duplicate, but I expect that most people who are using Premiere Rush will likely be using the touchscreen of their iPad or iPhone. So I think it's just one of them things that requires a little bit of a learning curve to get used to. Then below that, there's some view toggles for bringing down the waveforms from any attached audio, expanding the tracks, and a mouse cursor that you can toggle for when you want to select and stretch the media in the timeline. Speaking of the timeline, there's a maximum of four tracks of video and audio that you can use, and this is definitely much better than iMovie's puny one track timeline that requires lots of cutting so that you can add any b-roll over any audio clips that you may have. Above the timeline you have a large adjustable viewfinder, and of course the standard play, pause, skip, rewind buttons, the current timestamp, and along with a handy aspect ratio tool so that you can optimise for either vertical or horizontal content. But that's not all though, there are also many other tools for fine tuning along the right hand side such as graphics, transitions, Ken Burns effects, colour filters and Lightroom style adjustments, clip speed, audio volume, and cropping. Many of these sections also include Adobe pre-made effects and samples that you can utilize. So for example, the graphics section has various titles, transitions, and overlays that you can further edit yourself, and the audio section has a variety of background music that you can add too. However, all of these come with some limitations that we will get into in just a second. Okay, it's the next day, we're back. As you might have guessed from the time-lapse you just saw, I edited the first half of this video using only Premiere Rush on my iPad, and I now have a few thoughts. Starting off with them limitations that I just mentioned, there are quite a lot of them, and it's not that they've ruined the experience as such, but they just make it slightly annoying. Of course, Adobe being Adobe means that they want to push you into their Creative Cloud ecosystem as much as they possibly can, and as a result, they've barred some of the features that are in Premiere Rush. The full list of what Adobe deems premium features include 4K exporting, some of the titles, graphics and overlays, some of the music, sound effects and background loops, advanced audio settings, auto resizing and reframing when exporting to different social medias, and finally, syncing projects between other devices. Whilst it may seem like a lot is getting restricted, in reality, most of the things that are restricted aren't things that you would need to get a basic video edited. Of course, if you do need these features, Adobe charges $4.99 a month, or alternatively $33.99 a year, which is quite a significant amount. But you do have to keep in mind all of the different graphics and music libraries that are made available to you, so I guess it's not that bad. The only major push I found to pay that $4.99 or $33.99 was every time I imported 4K clips into the timeline. 
when a message would come up along the bottom saying that I was allowed to edit 4K footage but wouldn't be allowed to export in 4K unless I paid the price. I mean, I guess it's best to let people know before they go and try and export in 4K and then realise that they can't, but the pop-up does get annoying after the second time of reminding me. Other than these paid limitations, there's something else that I wanted to talk about. Something that was quite a bit better, and that's performance. As I mentioned, I edited the first half of this video using my iPad Air 3rd generation, which uses the A12 Bionic chipset, and sure, it wasn't without any shortcomings at all, but I was genuinely surprised at how good it was in comparison to my iMac over here, which usually stutters all of the time when I'm editing video. Some of the problems that I did encounter though included media taking a while to load both when importing and just generally on the timeline, the viewfinder being quite pixelated and also sometimes lagging behind the audio, and also the first attempt at exporting causing Premiere Rush to crash. However, most of these problems could be solved relatively easily, either by A. Waiting, B. Pressing pause and then play again, or C. Trying the whole thing again. To be fair, they're the three things that you do whenever anything goes wrong. The second attempt at exporting was also much smoother, and it took just over 50 seconds to export a 3 minute and 29 second long video. Sure, it was just in 1080p and not in 4K, but that's still pretty fast. It goes to show that even on a fanless, non-computer device, you can still do very intensive tasks, and if you have a newer iPad, I don't think you should have any problems trying to edit with it. So in conclusion, do I recommend using Adobe Premiere Rush? If you're someone who's just getting into video, absolutely. It's miles better than any of the other apps out there like iMovie and is straightforward enough that you can pick it up within a couple of hours of using it for the first time. I also recommend it to anyone who doesn't have a proper laptop or desktop device to properly run video editing software. Paired with a keyboard and mouse, the iPad can suffice for basic edits and Premiere Rush can help to get it done. And although Premiere Rush likely cannot rival other apps out there like LumaFusion which have many more features without any restrictions at all, in the case of say going on holiday for a couple weeks and not having a proper desktop or laptop, even I would be happy using Premiere Rush on my iPad to edit a video. But what do you guys think? Would you use Premiere Rush on your iPad? What features would you want Adobe to include in the future? And would you prefer them to make a higher end Premiere that is similar to the desktop version but instead for iPad now that the Pro model should be powerful enough to run it? let me know in the comments down below. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you're new here, make sure to subscribe as it would really help the channel out. This is Textbooks here, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.